Hello, and welcome. Why is my camera not kicking on? Let's find out. Oh, there it is. Hello, welcome to CDT Study Club, live on Twitch. Coming to you live from the great state of Kentucky. The okay state of Kentucky. Um, and from Russellville, Kentucky, where the home of Russellville Dental Laboratory. Tonight we'll be working together to study for the CDT, the National Board of Certification Certified Dental Technician Exam, which consists of three tests. Let's take a look at what those three tests are. <clears throat> we'll be doing this by creating a master presentation that we can all work in on. The link to that, if you're watching on Twitch, is right below. If you're watching on YouTube, the link should be right below, but I'll make sure it is. I'll go back and add that to it. Um, the CDT exam is three exams in four years. You've got the written comprehensive exam, the written specialty exam, and hands-on practical exam. Um, after you uh, after you pass the two written exams, you have to do the practical exam in your area. So uh, I personally am doing removable study um, and the uh, rest of our team, some of them are doing orthodontics. We've got a few doing different things, but all the comprehensive exam we take we're, we take generically together. Um, the specialty exam and the hands-on practical exam are specific to your area of study. So for me in removables, it would be all about dentures and polishing and stuff like that. And then the practical exam would be, uh, I think it's uh, setting full upper and lower set of teeth and processing to finish. And then you have to do a single arch try-in day of, and you have to repair a severely broken denture day of. So from what I hear, they'll literally just take a denture and they're just, just with a hammer and say, here, put this back together. So, good luck <laughs> to me, please. So, um, if you're new to Google Slides, a couple of things that you need to know. Uh, it's not real, real complex, but if you haven't used something like Google Slides before, basically you can make a slide anywhere just by clicking the plus line right here. Um, and you can pick different types of slides by clicking the drop down next to it. So we're using this template so you've got like title and body or like title and two columns. You just pick the correct thing. Most of the format of our presentation is already put together. And if you need to change the layout of the slide that you're on, for example, if I clicked a new one, it made a blank one and I wanted it to be say title and body, I can just go up here and click layout. And all of a sudden I've got my title and I've got my body of text. So you can edit them real quick. And when you're working on those presentations, if you're working on it in real time, we see it in real time. So nobody's going to mess with your stuff in real time. Um, so multiple people can work on the presentation together all at once or in real time. Um, <clears throat> just taking a look at what's covered. Uh, some of the resources that you need. The big one that we've been using is the United States Air Force Manual, which is an open uh, product. Like this is our tax dollars paid for this product. If you are an RDL employee, you can open the uh, operations, or excuse me, you can open up the RDL employee experience folder on your Google Shared Drives, and you'll find this drive right here. You'll find the CDT Study Club uh, presentation right here. You'll also find the Air Force manuals. If you're looking for anything, you can just go into the NADL CDT library, and there's several reference points listed in there that are RDL references. Um, if you're a member of the CDT Study Club, from outside of RDL, feel free to join us. You'll just need to find, a, find you a copy of the 2005, hold on, 2000, 2000, yeah, 2005 edition of the United States Air Force Manual V1 or V2. Um, those are available from the Department of Defense downloads. Like it's, it's literally, it's paid for by our tax dollars. You could buy a, a print version of it on Amazon and pay money for it, but you can just download the PDF if you'd like to. Uh, just search for Air Force Dental Laboratory or Dental Technology Manual and you'll find it, I guarantee you. Look for .gov websites. Um, or it might be a .mil, honestly. Uh, but you can actually search back through Air Force, Navy, all that stuff through their documents. Um, some cool stuff in there if you're interested. Um, Tonight we are going to be continuing on with anatomy. I thought last week I was like, we're going to finish up anatomy and we're going to go on to uh, something else. But I we did not finish up anatomy and I'm not sure that we will this week. Um, but our uh, after anatomy, I'm going to be working on materials and finishing that segment up. But this is your basic breakdown of what's on the comprehensive exam. 
Um, and again, this slideshow that we're working on together is just for the comprehensive exam. So uh, the big stuff is materials, safe working environments, and anatomy. Behind that, you've got industry guidelines, impressions, and models, and then articulation and theory. So we've been working in this segment right here because for me, this is the one that is the most um, abstract, whereas with the material stuff, you basically go, okay, well, if it's if it's stone, if it's this much more, you know, if it's a harder die stone, it's going to be this one more. If it's a lesser die stone, that's, that stuff's easier for me. Depending on where your focus needs to be, you might switch places. You can look in lots of places for the information here. We're using um, all the we're using all the reference points, with the notable exception of we have this book right here, Dental Selection, Dental Materials and Their Selection, but we actually have been substituting in Dental Materials Foundations and Applications, um, and also this one right here comes with some nice online access. So if you do get to grab yourself a, a copy of that on Amazon for cheap, um, you can. Uh, if you grab a copy of that for Amazon for cheap, you get to use their online sources. All you have to do is, for example, go to Elsevier's online portal and when you're in here, you say you just take your ISBN um, or title or keyword, so it's like dental materials, right? So when I buy this book, I would just go to Elsevier's website, and then I would say um, Phillips Science of Dental Materials Elsevier ebook on Vital Source, and I'm looking for the supporting features. Ah, so you have an access code and the or enter and evolve course ID, and that's in your book. Um, but yeah, so you can just click that. It's basically just the ISBN number off the back. Okay, so you take the ISBN number off the back. Let's just say if it was so if I went to this book right here and I don't have an ISBN right now, but if I did this, I'm pretty sure if we went back over here. All right, so no, you have to find your exact one. Um, I was wrong about that, but the code is available in that book, so you get some online access there. Moving on, um, at each of the sections is broken down into things that you need to know. So right now we're working on anatomy. I think we got to, we were down here pretty far um, last week, but we're, there's some backfill we need to do um, in here. So we're trying to make sure that all the slides are identified according to what we're actually doing. Um, and so let's make sure you've got like a sub, uh, a sub label on your slides and I'll show you what I mean. If we go down here to, you see you've got your different uh, header slides so you can find part B anatomy. So we're in anatomy. Here's this slide again. Um, and so A is identify occlusal uh, requirements. So control X. So now if we look at this next slide, we see we're, we're getting into occlusal requirements and all of these sub slides here, I've just pasted in, just control V and pasted in um, that we're on occlusal requirements. And then it starts here, differ differentiate types of occlusion. You see the same thing is down here. You've got your malocclusion, class one, class two, retronathic, pronathic. Um, I still think retrognathic sounds cooler, but you know, retronathic. Um, then we get into identify tooth morphology. So we've spent a lot of time here over the last two weeks um, learning about the difference between anterior and posterior teeth, learning about the line angles, learning about cusp angles, um, learning about, um, well, the labels of the different teeth, but that's not so important. Um, we've got some tooth, uh, we've got some tooth anatomy that we had to learn. And... We also learned about breaking the tooth up into thirds. We learned about the long axis of the tooth, uh, the mucosal membrane. You can see here, all right, so we, all right, so look, this is what we identify tooth morphology, and then this slide doesn't have that. So we're in C, identify tooth morphology. This was a slide we found online, so this is not like this one. I, I think I'm gonna get rid of this slide. Yeah, I'll leave it. It's pretty cool. Um, 
a lot of this stuff is copy text from the Air Force manual, but broken up so that it's easier to read. I tried to do good with the images so it was easier to understand. Um, talk about the different types of lobes. So it goes anywhere from, uh, I think it's what, it goes from four lobes up to six lobes. Or lobes. Lobes. All right, there we go. Uh, mammalons, these little bumps on early dentition. The cingulum is a convex mount of enamel locate, localized to the cervical one third of the crown. I think this was this is a better way to put it. I don't know why they gave that weird um, that weird view of this tooth, but this is the cingulum here. Let's go back. It's a weird illustration. Cusps, cusps, the pointy bits. So um, your cusp will go anywhere from, let's see, yeah, maxillary premolars and the mandibular first premolars have two cusps. Mandibular second premolar has three cusps. One buckle, one buckle and two lingual. The lingual cusps are divided into a mesiolingual and distolingual. Maxillary molars have four cusps, two buckle and two ling... I cannot, man. Cusps. That's pretty funny. Okay, uh, so here we can see that. So viewed from the occlusal, this is your premolar with two cusps, A and B. Um, your second molars, or second premolars, you've got three cusps. So one on the buckle and two on the lingual. Your first molars um, have three cusps, two on the lingual, or two on the buckle and one on the lingual. Your molars have four cusps, um, two on each side. And your five cusp molars, which I think is the, did this say there's a third molars, right? The mandibular first molar has five cusps. So, sorry, I got that wrong. Mandibular first molar has five cusps. There's three on the buckle and two on the lingual. There we go. Um, ridges. A ridge is a linear elevation found on the surface of a tooth as follows. A marginal ridge. A marginal ridge is a linear rounded border of enamel that forms the mesial and distal margins of anterior teeth. So it's this kind of dotted area here that you see on this image. This is your marginal ridge. The lingual ridge. Um, so this extends from the cingulum to the cusp tip. So from here, here, and you'll, that's most prominent on canines. Yeah, on the lingual surface of most canines, lingual ridge. There we go. And then cusp ridges. Each cusp has four cusp ridges radiating from its tip. So this is a way to show movement or let's see is that the best way to explain it this is a way to discuss position on the tooth especially in occlusion correct ridges cusp ridges so this is a is this an anatomical feature I'm gonna look deeper into this let's try to get an answer as best we can All right, Nest Visual Dictionary. Okay. Well, that is certainly a better image. Okay, I like this definition better too. Let's see how this pastes over.
dissectional. So a raised portion of the a raised part of the occlusal surface of the occlusal surface. I'm gonna do some selective highlighting here of a posterior tooth specifically that runs from a cusp tip toward the central dissectional groove on this posterior tooth. Cusp ridges either run perpendicular to the central dissectional groove, transverse, or at an angle, oblique. Cusp ridges either run perpendicular to the central dissectional groove, that means that they're transverse, or at an angle, oblique. So like they can be off axis, um, but the central dissectional groove is pretty much gonna follow, uh, it's gonna fi follow an imaginary line called the central fossa. Not an imaginary line, but a, an implied line. So we found a new resource. I'm gonna go ahead and click this over here. Um, all right, got a new resource to use. You know what? You know what, we're gonna make a new slide real quick. Boom, watch this, Air Force Manual B2, fixed, removable, watch this, boom. So another cool feature of doing things like this inside of Google, Google Docs is you can just link to your stuff directly. Um, so those should be shared and available for anybody who accesses them on the outside and now it's a link inside of our website. So you should be able to click on that and view it. If you have any issues, leave me a comment on the file or whatever. If you don't know, you can switch over into comment mode. How do you do that? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, you can just right click and comment. So you could say, hey, this doesn't work. You big jerk. All right, so we've now added a new online resources thing. So we've got this, and we'll use the Nest Visual Dictionary. That's pretty cool. Thank you, Nest. Thank you, Blue Dolphin PTC. All right, moving on. Going back down to where we were. So going back, all right. So we were at cusp ridges. And I'm trying to keep up with where we're going on um, each, one of these, each one of these areas. So cusp ridges would be... Still on tooth anatomy. We need to copy and paste this in a few times because we've left it out. All right, identify tooth morphology. So control C, we're gonna go boom, control V. I'm getting, getting blowed up. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, identify tooth morphology. That's what we're doing, baby. Identifying all that tooth morphology. All right, let's see if there was a better, um, let's see if there was a better resource, marginal ridge.
So I'm just going to pull this over here. I'm going to grab copy image. Alright, let me just say, unless otherwise stated, everything that you see here is copyright to somebody else. I am not creating anything here that is copyrighted or that is specific or that is commercial in any way. I am creating a study guide. So um, this is just a study guide for the CDT exam. Uh, it's not being used for any commercial process whatsoever. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna get back to anatomy. Because I feel like I got distracted. Where did it go? All right. Oh, okay. Huh. No term found. Lingual Ridge. Lingual Ridge. Hmm. So I'm wondering if there's a difference in terminology here. So I'm, I'm just looking at lingual band. That would be, yeah, okay. Lingual fossa, frame, plate, surface, tuberosity, lingual collar, concave, dissectional groove. Nope. But there we go. Lingual dissectional groove is, an, is a, yeah. A groove that extends from the occlusal surface all the way down to the cingulum. Central dissectional groove toward the lingual, separating the lingual crest and continuing on to the lingual surface. Okay. So why lingual surface? But it wouldn't be ling it wouldn't be lingual though. Lingual ridge, lingual ridge, lingual buckle ridge, buckle ridge. Let me take a look at buckle ridge. Huh. This doesn't, uh, so that's interesting that that doesn't have, all right. So lingual ridge, we'll use the Air Force definition. Sorry to space out there for a second, folks. I'm just trying to figure out why those two words don't match up. Um, all right. So all of a sudden we go from what we were doing, which was identify tooth morphology, uh, control C, control V, control B. Mm. Oopsie. There's that cool little YouTube video on primary dentition. So I think this goes if we're looking, I'm going to open this up and duplicate this tab so we can go back and forth to the beginning without losing our place. So if we're looking at our anatomy discussion, all right. Identify growth and development of dentition is D. So it is immediately following. So identify growth and development of dentition. Let's go ahead and just copy that.
Wow. I am batting a thousand on this PC tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I am an amateur. I'm a noob user of computers tonight. Apparently I've never touched one or used one successfully in my life. Alright, so we have our clear subsection here. As clear as it's going to get, I guess. Yeah. So our clear subsection. The only thing I don't like about Google Slides is you can't easily add another slide type that I know of to it. So if I like make if I make a new blank slide and I change the background to I don't know, something like RDL blue. Can I make this Yeah, see I can't just make this a uh Hmm. No, it's a shame. I can't just add this directly to my theme. That's what I'm trying to get across. So, whatever. All right. We're going to just put this placeholder in here so we know where our stop point is. But we're going to keep going with cusp ridges. And I'm going to get back to uh, the trick we talked about with um, the. It, if you don't remember the trick. trip. Oh, by the way, I uploaded the last two weeks worth of CDT Study Club onto, the, onto our YouTube channel just now so I apologize for not getting them up sooner I was supposed to do that right after the episode last week um, I unfortunately did not uh, as we talked about if you have the uh, Air Force manual and you can link to that earlier in the presentation if you click that link and you open it up it should open up like this like if you're using Chrome and if you want you can click on use Google Chrome right here and it'll pop up in this little view so that you can actually see your pages on the left hand side but the big part with this is the search function works so if we hit control F which works as search in most programs, you'll now be able to search this. So we can say denture, and it's going to recognize that there are 1,557 uh, issues of that, and dentures, there's 239. Or if we were looking for some more, something more specific, like lingual ridge, we would be able to see it. All right, there's our marginal ridges. So we're, here we are. So now we found our place. We're at 138, so that's, we have to add five. So in the book, it's 133. But for some reason, you have to add five pages to it to find it. I don't, I don't know what the deal is. All right, we are still in. Let's kind of find where the end of this. Uh, wow, we still got quite a ways to go. All right. Wow. All right, so there's a lot more. There's a lot more tooth anatomy, tooth morphology that we've got to do. Whew. Well, only 15 days until I can take a test, right? So we've got plenty of time to get this done. You guys will be here for CDT Study Club next Tuesday night before, you know, Thanksgiving and stuff, right? I mean... You can daydream about turkey and dressing all you want to as long as you're studying for the CDT exam, man. Rock on. All right. Okay, well, let's just get going on this and see how much we can get knocked out in the remaining 30 minutes of our time this evening. So, we were looking at, uh, the last time we were at lingual ridge and cusp ridges, we were trying to learn about ridges. Um, now we're going to look at triangular ridge. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get this image, and I'm using the, I'm, I've got it on, on another screen over here, open in uh, Adobe Acrobat, so I can just right click on the image and copy, so copy image, and we'll come over to our presentation, and we will go straight into the triangular ridge, so we're going to go after this, so let's do this, and we'll say triangular ridge control V we'll paste our oversized image in size it down a bit to go up here and then we'll add some text in the occlusal surface
the occlusal surface of a cusp is composed of a mesial and distal incline. These two inclines meet to form a triangular ridge of enamel that descends from the tip of the cusp to the central portion of the occlusal surface. A triangular ridge is either facial or a lingual cusp ridge, depending on where the cusp is located. So now to understand what they're saying there, this is they're referring to this right here as the triangular triangular ridge. But let's go back to our anatomy um, and talk about the tooth itself, the body of the tooth itself. So let's get all the way back to our anatomy. So when we're talking about enamel, we're not talking about the entire tooth. We're just talking about this layer right up here. Okay, so if we look at the clinical crown, if you will. So you can see that layer of enamel right here in this side view. You can see that triangular ridge as it goes down into the central fossa. Okay, and that's what they're referring to there. So it's not just that there is tooth body. The tooth body is different. I mean, it's you've got enamel and then you've got dentin under that, underneath that. So it's not all the same uniform material. All right. Pardon my yellow. I apologize. Lord, I apologize. All right. Next up, we will be looking at. Oh, let's see what. And since we've got this here, let's go ahead and pull up what triangular ridge here is. So, how do they have it? Triangular ridge. Okay. Interesting. Let's see what we're doing here. other image here now since we're using images from PTC Blue Dolphin I do want to give a shout out to them if you are trying to learn how to be a dental technician they are the best resources for traditional and and becoming one of the best resources for uh, digital uh, training they are great people, and they've done a lot of great, great work for our organ for our organization and for the industry itself. So, highly recommend you take uh, take a look at what services they offer. If you go to the um, if you go to the hands on or no sorry online courses here, you'll see they've got simplifying posterior dental anatomy, simplifying anterior dental anatomy, science of a natural smile, and oral anatomy and physiology. Um, simplifying. There's also uh, their three shape and exocad training which you can do on an iPad um, but we've done this uh, simplifying posterior dental anatomy and science of a natural smile etc we've done that for lots and lots of our employees so that's a, a great resource for you if you're looking to improve your um, training and knowledge all right so we're going to talk about the cusp angle wow this just goes on for a while all right Excuse me. All right. <clears throat> so the cusp angle All right, let's take a look at that. Next. Why is this image so large? And let's see what. Huh. Cusp angle again is not so. What I mean, this got to be something else here. Angle, angle of gingival convergence, angle development, angle, angle. Cusp. Cusp 
C U S P cusp tip cuspid Custafossa relationship. Cusp slope. Huh. Again, apologize for the yawns. Um, all right, let's get back to this cusp angle, perpendicular to long axis. So this is not available in the uh, NES or PTC documentation, so we're going to stick to what's in here. Um, we're going to go cusp R, described in some mouths as being pointy, and in others as being flat or blunt. Boom, boom, boom. A cusp angle all right a cusp angle is the angle that a triangular ridge makes with a plane perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth so this is most commonly seen or the or other than trying to mimic or give it words to the aesthetics of a specific tooth this is the most common place that you're going to run into this is traditional removables where you're trying to pick your cusp angle so if you're going with like 33 degree teeth or 20 degree teeth or 10 degree or flat or whatever those that's what this is referring to and that changes your working relationship um, in your um, in your arch so do 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 right, moving on to uh, transverse ridge I guess is next Transverse ridge. Now this one I believe is over here, so let's see what we can get our hands on. Transverse, transverse ridge. And we just did this, didn't we? Angular ridge, no, cusp ridges, transverse cusp ridge, just the transverse ridge. <sighs> okay. Transverse ridge is the union of a buccal and lingual triangular ridge that crosses the surface of a posterior tooth transversely, roughly 90 degrees to both the buccal and lingual tooth surfaces. Okay. Hey, Top Golf wants us to come golf, so I know that's important. Maybe we should put down the CDT Study Club and go to Top Golf. This episode of CDT Study Club brought to you by Top Golf and definitely not Coke Zero. I'm kidding. There's no there's no endorsement here whatsoever. Nobody paid me to do this. I don't even pay me to do this. All right. Um, transverse ridge. Moving on. Oblique ridge. The only tooth on which an oblique ridge is found 
is the maxillary molar, molar. An oblique ridge consists of a union between the triangular ridge of the distal buccal cusp and the distal cusp ridge of the mesiolingual cusp. Okay, so oblique ridge is only found in the maxillary molar. There's got to be a better explanation than this. Oblique ridge. Oblique. I love that word, oblique ridge. Okay. Do 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 just lining up images. Um, all right. Lining up those images, boss. <clears throat> so oblique ridge, a ridge that runs at an angle. It is an oblique ridge, an oblique. Well, let's look at the definition of oblique because this is just a little too, and this is why I hate. Okay, oblique. Oblique, neither parallel, are you kidding me? Neither parallel nor at a right angle to a specified or implied land, slanting. So, Basically what it's saying then is the oblique ridge doesn't run perpend it doesn't run parallel to the implied central fossa, the implied middle of the tooth. So it would just be off angle as opposed to a transverse ridge is the union of a buccal and lingual triangular ridge that crosses that is wordy. Yeah, I just don't, I'm not tracking on that one. But, all right, we know where it is. A transverse ridge is the union of a buccal and lingual triangular ridge that crosses the surface of a posterior tooth transversely. I thought you weren't supposed to use the word in the definition of the thing. So, like, if it's a transverse ridge, you don't say it's transverse. Like, I just thought that was basic, basic stuff. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm the crazy one here. Um... Let's take a look here. All right, next up we've got, so we're on oblique ridge. So we'll do lingual fossa, fossa. Is it fossa or fossa? Honestly, I'm going, going blank here. Control X. The lingual fossa. All right, what else we got? So very similar image. The lingual fossa is an irregular rounded concavity. Let's highlight that. Bound by the mesial marginal ridge 
distal marginal ridge, cingulum, and the incisal edge of the lingual surface of an incisor tooth. Of an incisor tooth. bound by the mesial marginal ridge. Yeah, okay. All right. All right, that's fairly straightforward. The lingual fossa is an irregular rounded concavity bound by, it's so basically the, the con, concave lingual surface of the incisors where it's bound by the, and there's like a ring around the outside edge of it that is that is not porcelain. <laughs> um, the marginal ridge marks the edge of the, uh, the functional edge of the clinical crown. What am I trying to say? Marginal ridge. Enamel. Why was I going blank on enamel? Jeez, oh Pete. All right. All right, now triangular fossa is next. So triangular fossa do to do to do. do. Uh, all right, there's that. And let's see what Ness is. Where them triangles at? Triangular ridge, triangular fossa, fossa. Okay, so it doesn't define like that. All right, that's cool. And then your central fossa. Central fossa. All right. Next stop is the central fossa. Next stop, central fossa. A central fossa is a centrally located depression or concavity found on the occlusal surface. Centrally located depression or concavity, highlight one color, found on the occlusal surface of molars. Highlight that a different color. And mandibular second premolars. The other premolars have mesial and distal triangular fossa but do not have a central fossa. All right, there we go. I like it. Thought I put central fossa. Where did I, yeah, here we go. This image, control C, move that one around. Maybe more than that because it's huge. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, moving on. Maxillary molar. So we were going to do central fossa here. Yeah. This is copy image.
Okay, there we have several images of Central Fossa. Let's see if there's anything else out there good on the on the interweb nets. Images. Um, any other good? No, there's nothing else really good stand out. All right. Moving on then, next thing up would be developmental grooves. Developmental grooves are next. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and close that one. Developmental grooves. Let's do the definition of developmental grooves. Boop. Of course, it's not going to work. All right. And then let's see what Ness has to say about it. Dev, dev, dev. Dev, dev, dev. Developmental proof. Good images. Anything else? No. All right. Okay, developmental grooves. A developmental groove is the junction line between the inclined walls of an adjacent cusp of adjacent cusp or ridges. Developmental grooves represent lines of union between lobes of the crown during its formation. These grooves appear on labial, occlusal, buccal, and lingual surfaces, and they are least apparent on the labial aspect of anteriors. But they are there. Frequently, if you just rub, rub your fingernail over that, even on the model, you can feel where the grooves are even before you can see it. So, um, we used to use... Uh, some we could use uh, like carbon powder, dark powder, and we would brush on that stuff onto your models, and it would help highlight where the developmental grooves were on the uh, on the real teeth. Um, so if you were trying to put those into porcelain, um, you could more easily identify those. And of course, now you can do a lot more tactile, uh, a lot more pronounced, more pronounced stuff with uh, design than you can do or then you can consistently do with uh, ceramics. So it's changed a little bit in the way that we process those, but um, it's one trick. If you do need to, if you need to get a detail, you can actually even take just pencil shavings and a, a little brush and just go over, um, go over these surfaces. But even on this, even on this 3D printed denture, you're able to feel the developmental grooves and lobes here in the anterior. This is not a production case, by the way, in case you in case you couldn't tell. We we're not sending that out like this. This is for for demonstration purposes only. Um, all right. One second here. What are we doing next? All right. So we're developmental grooves, and then we've got our supplemental grooves. Wow. This is just this is just breathtaking stuff. This is jaw dropping, heart stopping stuff here. Moving on to supplemental grooves. Supplemental grooves that should be like your indie, indie uh, chill music station. Hi, I'm Lee Corsi, and welcome to Supplemental Grooves. I'm going to be playing the best B sides and rarities from the uh, chill music that you know and love. Because I can really tell one chill music song away from another. That's that's how it works. 
I, I love EDM, but I cannot tell the difference in chill music. It all sounds like something you would hear at a spa or while I was getting my feet, my toenails printed or painted, not printed. Um, I just don't get chill music. It is not chill. It is very much not chill. All right. Supplemental grooves. A supplemental groove is a minor auxiliary groove that branches off from a much more prominent developmental groove. Supplemental grooves do not represent the junction of primary tooth parts. So basically, it's a tributary. If, this, if the developmental groove was a river, the uh, supplemental groove is a tributary. It's just a small little runoff. Let's take a look at what we're talking about here. And I just feel like that image is junk. Hi. Are you ready for some supplemental grooves? All right. Um, let's see what Ness is going to tell us tonight. Supplemental grooves. Sup, sup, sup. Nope. Secondary grooves. Um, secondary grooves, 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 grooves. We're going to groove tonight. Let's groove tonight. Be a spice of life. Secondary groove, secondary groove. Ba -doom, boom, boom, boom. There we go. Secondary groove. A supplemental, and we're just going to add this in. Secondary groove is a minor auxiliary. All right. Just make that. Clarification there. Let's see if we got any other good. Okay. This is a waxed up tooth form. Doom, 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 doom. So I'm doing some beeswax waxing. That's pretty cool stuff. Um, I have carved teeth out of soap before. Uh, they're terrible looking teeth, but they are recognizable as teeth. Um, but beeswax is another thing, a uh, very cheap way to learn um, carving and stuff. And you can just basically smush it down and use it again if need be. But um, lots of technicians have learned with pink wax and beeswax and stuff like that when they're learning contouring and shaping and anatomy. Um, let's see, supplemental grooves. Then we've got a fissure. Fisher. All right, and it's already 6.59. Um, so we're going to do one more here. We're going to do Fisher. I'm going to add in these images, and we're going to call it a night. Um, I appreciate everybody's time that joins us, whether you're joining us during the Twitch um, live show or whether you're watching later. You're just doing this at home you're doing this after you put the kids to bed i appreciate you so much thank you for what you're doing thank you for studying and trying to learn more and do more um, and thank you for spending your time outside of normal work hours trying to improve and be better i truly appreciate you um fisher and let's see i'm gonna just go ahead and since we found this i'm really glad we found this new resource uh so this is going to help improve the quality of images that we're getting here Fisher 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 yes yeah, so they don't have they don't have Fisher as a thing here for some reason so um, maybe it's somewhere else we'll find it later let's just check Fisher not found all right so that's gonna be our last slide for tonight we'll move our well, so we've got our little marker here we're using a little bright blue bookmark in fact we'll just go ahead and put in bookmark we can just keep moving this around give that some big old big old text make it big make it bold make it some other and make it white we'll just angle it a little bit and this is our bookmark so that's where we'll pick up next week We've got our new resources, so we got uh, 
I don't know, a couple of dozen, uh, it looks like about two dozen slides, maybe a dozen slides in. No, about a dozen and a half slides in. Um, just keep working on it. If you're working on it, if you're ready to get started, uh, if you're, remember we will, at RDL, we will pay for your testing and we'll pay you 6,000 um, bucks to get your CDT exam. So if that sounds like good to you, if that sounds good to you, make sure that you uh, check with us and get your test scheduled um, and uh, talk to your manager today. Uh, we'll get you taken care of. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time on CDT Study Club.